Hi, this is Lori, and this is my homework for Paul McWhorter's Pico W course, lesson number 25. In this lesson, we are learning about using the OLED display SSD 1306. And our homework is to draw a circle on our display centered at uh, the center of the display. I've been using this display in my own original projects. And I just, I had this slide created for, for that, and I thought I'd just share it. Um, this uh, SSD 1306 display can be found in two different sizes, uh, the 128 by 64, but there's also a 128 by 32, which is a smaller display. So if you only need a little bit of space, um, you can use that as well. And then I thought I'd show the one that Paul's using um, has the yellow at the top and the blue at the bottom. Um, and that's really nice if you want to create something like maybe a menu system or, you know, something where you have maybe some icons at the top and then something else happening at the bottom and you get this nice two color display. The downside of it is though, that there is this little strip in here that will not light. You can't, you can't light those pixels in there. This is a fill of that screen. So you can see there's a little line that you'll have in there and that can be kind of, um, not helpful if you want to use the whole display, say to draw a circle or some kind of graphic, um, you'll end up with this blank sort of line in the middle. So you can get these so that they don't have this two color, they're just um, black and white. And I have both of them, so I'm going to show them in my homework. I thought I'd just also share that it really helped me to understand that you're, as you're doing some of the coding and putting lines and text on your screen, you're actually filling up uh, a frame buffer that's sort of waiting here uh, for you to go ahead and put it up on the screen. Uh, so as you do things, you, you turn on and off various pixels, draw whatever uh, geometric shapes you want um, on there, and then it gets displayed or sent to the um, display using the show method. Um, so that's, that's kind of a, a good mental model to have that you're kind of preparing a, a screen and then you shift it to the display to show it. And then I just showed up here, you know, where the pixels are numbered, you know, 0, 0, 127, 63. When Paul gave us our homework, draw a circle on the display centered at the center of the display, I kind of went, oh, that's so easy. Is that really the homework? And um, I think it's because people don't understand that the library that we're using for the 1306 actually has a lot of built-in functionality that it inherits from the FrameBuff library in MicroPython. And so if you go and look at the FrameBuff library at the various methods that are available to draw on our screen, you'll see that there's quite a few, and Paul showed us several of them, the text, fill, pixel, horizontal, vertical line, line, and rectangle. And he also showed, I think, the filled rectangle, which is one that you don't see uh, documented in that part of the library. But there's also uh, one called an ellipse. And the ellipse allows you to draw a circle very simply. And it's actually quite functional. You can fill, you can just show certain quadrants. So you can, you can draw circles if you make the radius in both directions the same. You can also do ellipses as well. So um, when I first saw that, I said, hmm, I'm guessing that wasn't his intention that we all find the ellipse method in the frame buff library. Um, so I realized he maybe wanted us to do some math and try to remember some of our geometry and our knowledge about circles. So I did the um, homework both ways, what I call the easy way by just using the ellipse method, which of course is what I would use going forward. Um, but I also wrote a little function to, to actually draw a circle. It's not nearly as uh, nice with the fill and being able to draw various quadrants and also do ellipses as opposed to just circles. But uh, it does work, and I wanted to make sure I, I stayed faithful to the homework. Uh, but it is really easy if you know the ellipse method. Yeah, I just thought I'd quickly show the documentation for the, um, the frame buff uh, library here in MicroPython. So you can see here's the class and um, a, lot of, a lot of details. It's a little hard to read, but um, 
you, know, you can see here all the different uh, shapes that you can use, the methods you can use to draw things, and we definitely use some of them, but here's the ellipse, and, and actually you can even do a polygon um, with this library. So it appears that our 1306 driver um, inherits all of these um, methods from the frame buffer uh, library. So, um, you know, we don't really have to uh, write our own functions to do a circle, but I guess it's good for us. Yeah, I opened up the 1306 uh, driver just to confirm that it uh, actually does import the frame buff library for us. And then you can see down here the comments uh, that uh, provide support for the graphics primitives. And this is the link to that uh, documentation I just showed. So um, yeah, that's why it works. <laughs> Well, I'm going to do the homework the easy way first, and you can see I've hooked up uh, two displays. One's monochrome and one is the two-tone uh, yellow and blue, uh, just so we can see what they look like. And I have them all hooked up, uh, both to uh, separate buses. So to do that, I had to um, put one display on one bus and one on the other because they both have the same um, I2C address and I didn't want to uh, on the back you can solder to change the address and put them both on the same bus but I didn't really want to do that so there are two buses two I2C buses so I used both the one and the zero and uh, appropriate pins to connect to those so that's how I set that up and then I'll just go ahead and put some text on there um, on both the, my displays, sleep for a few seconds so we can take a look at that. And then here's the easy solution to the homework. If I have a circle centered at 6432 with a 20 uh, pixel radius, uh, then I just make the X and Y radius both 20. And if I put the true at the end, then it's going to be filled. If I don't put a true, then it'll just be an outline. So we'll see both the outline and the fill and we'll sleep five uh, seconds, but then we'll just clear the screen and stop. So let's go ahead and run it. There we go, we can see the uh, text. And there's our circle. And this is what I mean about um, the two-tone. You can see that, you know, if you're not careful, you cross over that little blank line and, and then maybe that's not quite what you want. So um, that's the easy solution to the homework. Well, I went a little further with the uh, easy ellipse method just to show it, the other functionality it has. Um, so I decided to draw some ellipses instead of uh, circles. Uh, so you can see here I'm going to call the ellipse and put it in the center, but um, the x radius and the y radius are not equal, so I will get an ellipse rather than a circle. And um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and fill it up. And then if you use uh, sort of a binary um, uh, number here, you can turn on which quadrant of the circle you actually want to display. So if I put the one here, I'm going to see the upper right. If I put the one here, I'm going to see the upper left, then the lower left, and then the lower right. So you can see you're sort of using your binary number to turn on and off the various quadrants. Otherwise, they're all turned on if you don't put this uh, parameter here. But the nice thing is then you can actually turn on uh, more than one quadrant at a time. So I can do the upper right and left, and then uh, I can do the upper right and the lower left here. So you can see I just kind of went through all of them and then uh, uh, clear the screen. So let's just run this for fun. And I'm just doing it on the blue one. Let's see, going through the different quadrants and then the two at the same time. And then it should turn off. So that's uh, what's really nice about that ellipse method is you have a lot of functionality built into that. So uh, to do the homework the hard way, we need to know something, or at least the way I thought of it. Uh, I decided to think about the circle in terms of polar coordinates and, and gather those up and then switch it back to Cartesian coordinates, which is really the natural way to work with our display because it's more like an X, Y, um, display and that's the Cartesian that we're all very used to and then you know digging back into our past math that we did in high school uh, we probably learned uh, polar coordinates and there where you have a radius and then whatever angle you are relative to uh, to the zero degree angle and uh, so a circle is very simple you have the radius you want and then you go through all the angles from zero to 360 degrees and you've got a circle drawn on here so that's simple enough. You can get these R theta pairs 
And theta is usually expressed in, in uh, radians from 0 to 2 pi. We'll take you all the way around the circle. I don't like to think in radians, so um, I wanted to be able to run my looping uh, through 0 to 360. So I used uh, this equation down here to convert um, you know, the degrees into uh, radians um, by putting in my degrees, which I'm used to thinking to, and then turning it into radians before I put it into the equations that'll change a polar coordinate into our Cartesian coordinate, and that's what these are right here. So um, using those, I could take each pair, turn it into an XY pair, and then put it on the Cartesian uh, uh, coordinate system, which I'm going to use for um, the display. Well, here's the homework the hard way, where I wrote my own little uh, code to do, draw the circle uh, using our knowledge of geometry. So we'll set everything up. We'll need to import the math uh, library because we'll need to use cosine and sine to convert the polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. And we'll also use the built-in pi uh, variable in the math library as well do the setup as we've done already, and here's a little function I put together to create the data to draw the circle. Um, I'll just create um, a list of circle values and initialize them to empty right now, and then I'll create a, li uh, a list of uh, angles. I want to go from 0 to 360 degrees. I'll do it by ones, and then um, I'll loop through that. I'll loop through the angles, and I'll do that uh, math that I needed to calculate the appropriate um, coordinates for uh, the x and y, as if the um, circle was at the origin. And then I'm going to shift everything to the actual center that we want. And in our case for the homework, um, 64 and 32 will be our center. So um, it's easier to do all this conversion to the origin first and then shift it, or at least that was what I thought of. And then we'll, as we make all these pairs, we'll just put them in our list as, a, as tuples of x and y's, and then we'll return that out of our function. So then uh, here I'm using the circle function and centering my circle at 64, 32 pixels with a radius of 20. And then I'll draw it first on uh, OLED 1, and I'll go through and turn on all those pixels and show that. And then um, I'll do it for the other uh, display I have, OLED 2, and do the same thing. Show that. Sleep for 10 seconds so we can see it, and then clear the screen. All right, let's run it. Hopefully it'll work. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it looks okay, I guess. And uh, So yeah, so that's kind of the my version of the hard way to draw the circle. Well, that's my homework. Thank you for the great lesson, Paul, and thanks for watching.